A free body diagram is a diagram of all the forces acting on an object. So let's take an example. Let's take a physics book on a table. So here's the table. Put the physics book in green. There you go. Physics book just sitting there on the table. What are the forces acting on this book? Well, the book has mass. It's in a gravitational field. So it has force of gravity. Label that FG. A lot of people also label it uh, with a capital W. And force of gravity is the same thing as weight, which equals mass times the acceleration of gravity. Great. Well, we know the book is not accelerating downward, so there must be another force to balance that. And there is, and it's called the normal force. The normal force is a contact force, basically the electrostatic repulsion of the atoms of the book and the atoms of the table. Great, and that's it. Those are the only two forces acting on that book. And they balance each other, so there's no acceleration. Very simple. Let's get a little more tricky. Let's put the book on an inclined plane. So there's our incline, and here's the book. So this might be a ramp, for example, or a hill. And let's draw all the forces acting on the book. There's still gravity, so there's still the force of gravity. Uh, there's still contact between two surfaces, so there's still the normal force. And this component, well, let me draw it in blue. This component of gravity Oops. This component of gravity is what's balancing out the normal force. This component of gravity would normally cause it to accelerate down the incline, but we have friction, which is always parallel between the two surfaces, and friction prevents the force downward, or sorry, prevents any downward acceleration. There you go. So in red, those are the three forces acting on the book. Great. Well, let's take the case that often confuses students of something moving at constant velocity. So how about, for example, a hockey puck on ice? The ice is pretty much frictionless, so we'll view it that way, no friction. And the, the hockey puck is moving along at some constant speed. So I'll write constant for velocity here. Well, constant velocity means that there is no acceleration. No acceleration means there cannot be a net force. What are the forces acting on the hockey puck? Well, it has mass, so you have force of gravity. Contact between two surfaces, you have normal force. And that's it. There are no other forces acting on the puck. That's how it's going at constant speed. Great. So. Let's take a, a final case of a skydiver. And so here's the parachute when skydiving. It's always handy to have a parachute. So I hear, anyway. There he goes. Now let's take different situations. How about right at jump? So I'll label that jump. So immediately when he jumps out of the plane, what does the free body diagram look like? Well, it's very simple. Simply the force of gravity. But as he speeds up, immediately the parachute starts to fill, or, or even before he opens the parachute, it would be on his body, but you get air, air resistance. So let's write that. Later on, you have two forces, force of gravity, and then some drag force. And then later still, at terminal velocity, so I'll write terminal here, well, by definition, there is no acceleration. And the reason for that is that the drag force is balancing the force of gravity. Excellent. So that's a primer on free body diagrams.